But right now, I'm pleased to bring in senior advisor to President Donald J. Trump, Jason Miller, on the set with us now. Jason, great to have you. Good to be with you. Well, we know Speaker Johnson may be on the House floor right now, but he'll be with uh, President Trump today at Mar-a-Lago. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but I wanted to get your reaction to a report that came out today from Axios scooping that Mo Joe Biden's been using his campaign funding to pay for his legal bills. You know, it's really interesting because they made a big fuss saying, well, Trump's doing that. I guess it's only OK uh, when it's President Biden doing it, huh? Complete shocker. I never would have thought the Democrats would do that uh, to the exact thing that they're criticizing President Trump for. Of course, that's exactly it. And I think it's really disingenuous that the Biden campaign, the entire DNC, the Democrat apparatus, but also to members of the mainstream media. Yeah. Why didn't they go and say to the Democrats, are you sure you're not doing this? Because that's exactly what happened. Well, you have to wonder sometimes who they're actually working for. And I'm glad you led us there because last night, pretty outrageous, MSDNC's Lawrence O'Donnell. Of course, he's no fan of Trump, but he really went out of his way to be nasty. He actually froze frame a photo of 45. Here's his monologue. That's a picture of him when he's trying to look his absolute best because we don't want people to hear this uh, derogatory uh, statement. I mean, basically, it's a tirade of insults before the trial begins on Monday. It's, it's so egregious because you know what it is, Jason? We felt like the fact is they can't stand the real images, what played out in Atlanta in that Chick-fil-A. That is the image. That is the iconic shot that they don't want to show. We have it here. We literally played it for 30 minutes. Look at this woman hugging Donald Trump. And, you know, she said, I don't care what the media tells us. We still love you. We won't see that on mainstream big media, will we? No, you won't. And the thing I have, where I have the problem with MSDNC is the entire left, whether it be the, that channel or whether it be the Democrats, they're saying that this election is about democracy, that we have to heal our divisions, we have to bring people together. But then they go and do that. They're very good at misinformation and disinformation. That's really their playbook. Everything that they accuse President Trump of doing. That's what they're actually doing. That's their playbook. Yeah, it is. And to really Photoshop and kind of freeze frame something when anyone can be frozen. I'm sure Lawrence O'Donnell has some photos if we decided to do it. It just seems so low and underhanded. But again, not surprising from them. All right. As we came on, we were watching the FISA vote, which is in play right now. This is a very big issue. It's actually putting a lot of pressure on Speaker Johnson. You know, some of the GOP members who voted it down this week, 19, are saying that he's sort of siding uh, with Ray and intelligence folks. And they're going to put some pressure on him. We know next week they're there is Ukraine funding coming up as well. So uh, Speaker Johnson, you know, doesn't want to have to face this motion to vacate vote. We do know today there's this open forum. He's joining 45 at Mar-a-Lago for election integrity. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you may be, uh, we might be hearing. Obviously, uh, we know Donald Trump has talked about unity because, you know, a motion to vacate doesn't seem like this would be a great way for Democrats, uh, would be a great way for uh, Republicans to go forward because Democrats could use it as a major decision. Yeah. So when we talk about Speaker Johnson and President Trump being at Mar-a-Lago this afternoon, election integrity really is one of the, the key issues of this fall because we can turn everyone out. We can do everything. But if we aren't sure exactly who's voting, then there are issues. So with the border being open the way it is right now, Biden's the border bloodbath with upwards of 15 million people mm -hmm. that have come across the border just under these three years under the Biden presidency, we have to make sure that it's only Americans, only legit voters who are showing up. So part of what President Trump and Speaker Johnson are going to talk about, some of the shared principles of what can be done at the federal level, a lot of that, a lot of the election work has to be done at the state level, but there are some things that the federal government can do, and that's where President Trump and Speaker Johnson are united. One other thing, Bianca, got to make sure that we keep the House. That is so critical, so important. We saw what it was like during the two years yeah. uh, when they were launching the J6 committee and all of that nonsense. We have to keep the House in Republican hands. Well, it's the majority, one vote. I mean, you, you have people like Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin stepping down and, you know, in just in time so there can't be a special election. You have to wonder what, what's this uh, rash of kind of folks deciding they're going to abandon, especially, as you say, it's such a critical time. Do you think the fact that Speaker Johnson will be next to 45, though, will send a message like, let's get it together? Is that part of what I think uh, maybe Speaker Johnson is hoping to do kind of draft off of by standing next to Donald Trump today. Well, we have to be united. We have, this close to an election, we have to be united in making sure that the Democrats, which, by the way, they control the Senate, they're going to shovel a whole lot of bad stuff at the House. We have to make sure that we have that we're in charge and that we stand together going into the fall. We got to win elections. We can't be the stupid party any longer. We have to win elections. You're not going to do that with constant chaos.